St. Pete is known for its sunny weather and white sandy beaches. And what goes best with great weather and beaches? Well, beer, of course. And luckily, St. Pete has several unique breweries serving up some amazing beers. We're Jamie and Skyler, and we'll take you to 10 breweries around downtown St. Pete where you can find them. The 10 breweries on this tour are all located within just two miles of downtown St. Pete. Over the course of three days, we'll show you what each brewery is doing to stand out from the crowd to help you decide which ones you want to visit. Oh, and we'll try 42 beers while we're at it, and we'll identify our favorite beers at each brewery. And be sure to stay tuned till the end, where we'll share our favorite beers of the entire tour, as well as the most budget-friendly flight option. Now let's go get some beer. Bayboro is located in the Warehouse Arts District and is the newest of the breweries in the downtown St. Pete area. Bayboro is a veteran-owned brewery that is community-focused and offers great indoor and outdoor space. The beer was great, there was live music on the patio and a food truck outside. So we were able to get a flight here at Bayboro. On the left we have a vanilla imperial porter, then we have a peanut butter stout. After that we have a Belgian strong ale, and on the right we have a creamsicle IPA. We do want to mention that Bayboro had a pretty unlucky start. This brewery had its grand opening on St. Patrick's Day this year, which was also the day the state of Florida issued a mandatory shutdown order. Fortunately, they were able to stay afloat and were thankful to be able to enjoy their beer and support a local business. Skyler's favorite at Bayboro was the Imperial Vanilla Porter, and my favorite was the Creamsicle IPA. The second brewery on our tour is Three Daughters. It's also located in the Warehouse Arts District and is just over a quarter mile from Bayboro. Three Daughters is a large brewery that opened in 2013 and is well established in the St. Pete area. It has both indoor and outdoor bars and offers beers, ciders, hard seltzers, and sodas. Three Daughters also has a very large stage, perfect for live music. Here we tried the Turtle Red Ale, Paul's Landing Barrel Aged Sour, Nitro Black Tip Porter, and Nitro Belgium Golden Strong Ale. Three Daughters also offers many games like darts, shuffleboard, and pinball. My favorite was the Nitro Black Tip Porter, and Skylar's favorite was the Nitro Belgian Golden Strong Ale. All right, we just finished our second brewery experience, and that was at Three Daughters. We really enjoyed the music. We got to play shuffleboard. Overall, it was a great experience, and we'll see what the next brewery has to offer. The third brewery on the tour is If I Brewed the World. It's only about two blocks from Three Daughters, but is technically located in the Grand Central District. Immediately, this brewery reminded us of the 90s. Thanks for our champion. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie is definitely not the Space Force champion. It's the first time I've seen this. Yes, I did grow up with this game in my home, but there's still no excuse for being this bad. Oh, there you go. Earth. You made it to you made it to our planet. Good job. So this place has cereal. Lucky charms, please. That's good. Yeah. Here we tried the Raspberry Coffee Sour, the Crunchberry Wheat, Frape Groot IPA, and Dark Pool Stout. If I Brewed the World is a small batch brewery that offers creative beers. On their website, they describe themselves as the mixtape of breweries. We also have to mention that they have a sweet brewery cat, 90s music CD covers on the wall, and more games to bring back those 90s memories. Here we agreed on our favorite, 
which was the crunchberry wheat. They are spot on with the crunchberry flavor. We're here at our third brewery, If I Brewed the World. So when you walk into If I Brewed the World, it's kind of like walking into the 90s. And being kids that grew up in the 90s, we absolutely loved it. It was kind of like walking into the uh, 90s living room. There was 90s wrestling playing on the TV when we walked in. Um, there's a bunch of 90s games. There's a cat, which isn't really 90s, mm -hmm. but we like cats, so that was a plus. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, there's a bunch of 90s albums on the wall, which was also really cool. Definitely worth putting on your list of breweries to hit up. It is day two of our St. Pete Brewery Tour. Yesterday we made it to three breweries and today we're going to try to make it to at least four more. It's really hot in Florida here today, so we're definitely ready to get some cold beers. We'll see you there. We do want to mention that because we were able to get so much footage at each brewery, this will be a two-part series. Both part one and part two will each include five breweries. Be sure to subscribe so you won't miss part two of the awesome breweries in St. Pete. The fourth stop on our tour is Avid Brew Company. It's located in the Grand Central District. Avid actually started off as a brew supply and hydroponics store, but within the last year or so, they also started brewing their own beer. So not only is it a great place for those who love drinking beer, but also for those who love brewing it. We'll see you inside. When you enter the building, the supply store is on the right and the brewery is on the left. When walking into the tasting room, we're hit with the wonderful combination of aromas of the beers they're brewing along with the brewery ingredients they sell. Avid has a small back patio area to enjoy beers and occasional live music. During our visit, Avid had only reopened a few days prior. We were able to enjoy the brewery without any crowds. So Avid also offers flights and today we chose the sour stout, the sour pills, the barley wine, and the porter. And this is actually the first time we've ever even seen a sour stout, so we're especially excited to try that. Avid doesn't seem to specialize in any particular kind of beer, but we have noticed their beers don't typically include a lot of sweetness. They're able to highlight many flavors well without the added sweetness. This cat is actually the neighbor's cat, but we talked to the owner here and he said the cat likes to hang out here. We don't blame it. We would hang out here too if we lived right next door. The Sour Stout was both of our favorites at Avid. All right, we just finished having a flight at Avid. And that Sour Stout actually turned out to be awesome. We're really glad the bartender recommended it. Yeah, we are because that's not typically a beer we probably would have tried. No, it sounded really weird. <laughs> but it turned out to be really good. All right, on to the next. Day two, brewery number two is Pinellas Ale Works, also known as Paw. Pa is known for being a very dog-friendly brewery and also for having a ton of beers on tap. Yeah, I think they typically have around 30 beers, so that's really nice. We'll see you inside. Pinellas Ale Works is also located in the Grand Central District and is only a few blocks away from Avid. As you can see, they offer many beers on tap and they were the first runner up for the best small brewery in Florida in 2020. Many of their beer names are dog themed and they also offer dog themed merchandise. So our flight here at Paw includes the Nitro Coffee Stout, the Hot Lava Guava IPA, the Passion Fruit Shake IPA, and the Barrel Aged Vanilla Bean Porter.
Thankfully, during our visit, there were two friendly dogs out on the patio that were agreeable to being filmed for this video. Hi, Bear. <laughs> In general, St. Pete is very animal friendly, but we always expect to find a variety of dogs at Paw when we visit. Hi, Rumor. Hi. <laughs> Skylar's favorite during this visit was the Hot Lava Guava IPA, and my favorite was the Coffee Stout on Nitro. So that ends our time here at Paul. We had a great time trying some beers and petting some dogs. Unfortunately, now we have to make the long walk all the way across the street to Cage. <laughs> and there it is. We'll see you over there. So this is where we will leave you all for this video. Make sure to subscribe and turn the notifications on so you won't miss when part two is posted. In that episode, we will be visiting Cage, Green Bench, St. Pete Brewing, Overflow, and Cycle. We will also be sharing our overall favorite beers of the tour and which brewery had the most affordable flight. We hope you've enjoyed the first half of our tour. Let us know in the comments which brewery is your favorite so far. Sorry, kitty. No, I gotta wear this. I gotta wear this mask. Ready? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. Day two, brewery two is. <laughs> That's hard to say. Tongue twister, huh? Yeah. We'll see you inside. So, was I supposed to say the end this time? <laughs> well, that was really awkward. Right.